Well, hey, good morning again, and welcome to Alive Family Church. We are so thankful and grateful to have you guys all joining us today. If you're joining us in person, it's so good to see you. If you're friends and family online, joining us online, welcome as well. Today is the first Sunday of June, believe it or not. And uh, today we're also kicking off a brand new series, In the Belly of a Whale. Side note, we are not actually starting this series from inside the belly of a whale, but we are going to look at a gentleman in a story who does know that experience very well and what we can learn from that. And so for this entire month of June, we've dedicated to look at the book of Jonah, to have a deep, in-depth, line-upon-line study of the minor prophet book of Jonah. And um, we're going to look at one chapter a week. So today is the kickoff of this series. If you didn't know this was happening no shame in the game if you did not read Jonah chapter 1. We're going to read that together today, but uh, it's very easy to do that. But if you're going to be joining us uh, this whole month, next Sunday we're going to talk about Jonah chapter 2. So some point in this week in your personal devotional time, read Jonah chapter 2. It's just 10 verses. It's really easy. You can do it in about a minute. Uh, uh, but that will give you some context as we dive deeper into this. But uh, we're really, really excited. In case you're not familiar with the story of Jonah in the book of Jonah. Uh, here's just a quick overview as we kick off today. The book of Jonah is one of the minor prophets. There's major prophets and minor prophets is a shorter one. Uh, it can be found near the very end of the Old Testament. So if you're familiar with the Bible, there's Old Testament, New Testament. It's about 15 pages backwards or to the left of the New Testament. It's a short book. Like I mentioned before, it's four chapters, really easy read. There's only 48 total verses that make up the whole book of the Bible. So literally every week you could read through the book of Jonah before you come on Sunday and, and just get deeper into it. Uh, it follows the story of Jonah, which we're going to learn a lot about in this series. Uh, and, and many Bible scholars uh, consider Jonah as the rebellious prophet or the reluctant prophet, all right? And we're going to learn why they gave him that title in just a moment. Uh, and in case you didn't grow up in church, uh, in case you didn't watch the Veggie Tales movie about this, uh, in case you haven't read this far in your Bible and you have no clue what Jonah's all about, uh, I'm going to give you just kind of a quick overview synopsis of this whole story because we're going to go to all these details and really pull out more uh, what the Lord wants us to as we go through this series. But kind of the story of Jonah is this. God calls a man or a prophet named Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach, preach repentance to his enemy, the Ninevites. Jonah says no, instead hops on a boat in Joppa and starts heading to a place called Tarshish. Everybody say Tarshish. Tarshish. It's really hard to say. I'm going to say it like 18 times today. Help me. Pray for me, all right? While on the journey, God sends a storm in the, uh, against the boat, and uh, the sailors end up throwing Jonah overboard, right? In that same moment, God had prepared a way of escape for Jonah. He prepared a big fish. Many scholars believe it is a whale. We're not talking about a largemouth bass that swallowed him, all right? This isn't free willy that came and got him, all right? This is a large beast that he could fit in its stomach and still be alive, all right? Once Jonah is off the boat, the storm calms, right? Everything's crazy, but he gets swallowed up by this whale. And then three days, he's in the belly of this whale, and he prays and he cries out to God and kind of sort of half repents, and, and the whale spits him out on the land, and he actually goes and does what God originally told him to do. He goes to the place of Nineveh, and he preaches, hey, in 40 days, y'all going to be dead if you don't repent, right? And the people of Nineveh repent. They cry out. They fast. They seek the Lord. They turn from their way and God relents on destroying this people. Now, the crazy thing is Jonah gets ticked about it uh, because he wanted his enemies to die and suffer, but God's mercy and compassion hits them. And so God kind of calls Jonah out on the carpet in chapter four and says, what's up with you, bro? And then the book ends. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna, you're like, what? It's like, Arr! and just like exit, right? Like, Jonah, you shouldn't be like that. Let's move on, right? And so we're gonna talk about uh, each of these four chapters as we go throughout today, but um, it's a powerful story. There's, there's so many things that we can pull out and study in this. There's, there's God's calling and God's plan for our own lives. There's, there's obedience to his word, right? We see prayer. We see repentance. We see themes of love and compassion and, and many more nuggets of wisdom that we will be able to pull out as we go. But the other really cool thing that I believe is powerful about this study is this, that we oftentimes can find ourselves in the midst of this story, and sometimes it's a scary place to be, 
None of us want to be in the belly of a whale, metaphorically speaking, right? Or, or physically speaking, right? None of us want to be running away from God's plan, but I think a lot of times we have own Jonah seasons in our life. And sometimes you can learn how to do it right by somebody's example of how they didn't do it right. Amen, right? Sometimes the best way to learn is what not to do or how not to do it right and how to get it right the first time. So we're going to learn from some of Jonah's mistakes and how he got it right. And I believe God's going to bless us all through this process. I believe our faith's going to grow this series. I believe we're going to get closer to God. We're going to align our lives more with God's plan, what he's called us and told us to do in this season of our life. I believe it's going to be really, really life-giving. And so I'm excited to dive into chapter one with you guys. Uh, If you're taking notes and you like titles, today's message is the 3,000 mile no, all right? And that will make sense in just a moment as we get further in our study. The 3,000 mile no, all right? Let's open up with prayer to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive from God's word and his Holy Spirit this morning. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We thank you for your presence here. We acknowledge you. You are here. Your word is truth. Holy Spirit, illuminate our spirits, illuminate our minds today. Lord, take your word and make it plain and clear to us today. As we dive into this book study on Jonah, Lord God, I pray that, Lord, all the themes that you want us to catch, all of the things that you want for our own lives, to align our purpose with yours, to to follow your call and your plan, your word, Father God, to not run from you, but to embrace and run towards you, Father, that we we would gain that and more this morning. And so, Father, speak, for we are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. All right, so go to Jonah chapter one. If you brought your Bibles or you like to turn your Bibles on, go to Jonah chapter one. It's sometimes helpful to see that. If you don't have a Bible with you, man, I encourage you, hey, Church is a great place to bring your Bible. You won't get made fun of here. Uh, you know, I don't care how fat it is, how old it is, what translation it is. You should bring your Bible to church, amen. But we will put it up on the screen for you as well. I'm going to read through all 17 verses of Jonah chapter 1. Is that cool? In case we haven't read this or whatever. It will, I'm going to go through it really quickly. It will be on the screens, but it's going to be like it's going to be like zipping. And so uh, just heads up, here we go. We're going to get the context. Jonah chapter 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare. He went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners, or the sailors, were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and he threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had laid down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. Then they said to one another, come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So they said to him, please tell us for what causes this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and they said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then he said to them, they said to him, what shall we do to you for this sea that it may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more temptuous. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea and the sea will become calm before you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more temptuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, we pray, O Lord, Please don't let us perish for this man's life and do not charge us with the innocent blood for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Verse 17, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. That, my friends, is Jonah chapter 1. Everybody say, rough day Jonah. Rough day Jonah. Oh my gosh. There are so many directions that we could go based off this chapter, but for the remaining of our time together, and I just really, as we've been praying this week, as I've been praying and seeking the Lord, Lord, what would you want us to learn and take away from this 
uh, today. I've got three things for us today I believe God wants to make crystal clear to us. So if you're taking notes, the first one is this, number one, God's word leads the way. God's word should lead the way in our life. Jonah chapter one, verses one and two, let's go back to this. We're going to kind of dive in verse by verse now. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness came up before me. So what was the word that came to Jonah? It was to go to Nineveh. God gave a very distinct, descriptive word to his prophet and said, go, right? And this was God's plan for Jonah. Now, side note, as, as, I, dived, as I dove in and studied this week, I really got blessed. It, here, side note, you, you can read the book of Jonah a hundred times, and every time you read it, God can show you something new, amen? Because the word is living and it's active, right? It's not a dead book, it's an alive book, amen? And so just know that. If you're, I know this. I learned this in kids' church. I saw it up on the flannel board. You know, I did all this stuff. It's like, hey, man, God's got something fresh. God's got something new for you today. Jonah, the name Jonah means dove. Dove is symbolic of God's peace in Scripture and God's spirit. Remember when Jesus was baptized and the spirit of heaven was ascending like a dove, right? Um, so we've got Jonah, who's peace and, and, and spirit, right? His dad's name was Amittai. That means truth, all right, so check this out. Jonah, this prophet, is anointed by God as a prophet, the son of truth, called to speak truth to a hostile people uh, by the Spirit of God. This is, this is how, who God created Jonah to be. This is God's word to Jonah. This is his path and his plan from Jonah, right? He says, go. And, and man, I, I don't know about you guys, but as we endeavor to follow God's plan for our own life, we need to be paying attention to the word of God that God's speaking to us, amen? Because God leads and guides his children by his word, right? Psalm 119, verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path, amen? How many of you guys are thankful for God's word in your life? How many of you guys are thankful that the word of God can help steer us in the right direction? It can illuminate our path. There, there's many different paths we can take each day, each season of our life. The word of God is the one that lights it up. Like a runway for an airplane in the night, how do you know where to land? The word of God lights it up. Some of you guys got those nice solar lights leading up to your house on that little path, right? When, it, when the lights click off, how do I know not to walk in your grass or your landscaping? The word of God lights your path, right? Which way do we need to go in our lives? The word of God leads us, Amen. And so the word of God, man, it will never steer you in the wrong direction. It will never trick you. Amen? We have to have trust in God's word, right? And, and um, God's word will always lead us to what's best for our lives. It will never leave us empty. And so in this first two verses of the book of Jonah, we're encountered with this reality that Jonah was told to go, but as we're going to see in verse 3, we know his response already this story breaks down really quickly when, when we don't follow the word of God, amen? When we, don't, when we aren't obedient to the word of God in our lives. And so personal application for you and I, man, what word is God speaking to you right now? What word do you feel heavy on your heart? What word is popping off the pages when you spend time in the word? What word has been spoken over you in this season? What word do you sense God calling you because that is what is supposed to lead you and guide you. Not how you feel, not what the media says, not all these things over here, but the word of God that's firmly established forever settled in heaven. Everything will pass away here, but the word is eternal. It will always remain. The word of God is called to lead you and guide you, right? And it, it, God wants us to follow his perfect plan for our lives. And so as you read your Bible, as you worship, as you journal, as you pray, as you seek God, what word is God speaking to you? And he, side note, somebody like, speaking? I've never heard God's voice. You know what? I've never heard God's voice either, audibly. I'll just be honest with you. I've heard God's voice by his spirit many times. That still small voice on the inside. A scripture. God's word is his word, right? And God, God's will is his word. God will speak through the Bible, right? So as we're doing these, what themes are heavy on your heart right now in this season. The Lord led me to a really cool verse 
this week in Psalm ver- chapter 45, verse 1, the psalmist says, my heart is overflowing with a good theme. I just love that. What good theme is your heart overflowing with? Because that is the word that God has for you in this season. That is your lamppost. That is your path. That is your guide in the direction he's wanting to steer your life. For Jonah, it was go to Nineveh. Boop, 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 boop. And he, uh, we're going to learn what he did, right? But for you, it might be joy. Maybe the enemy's been stealing your joy lately. You've been so down in the dump, so depressed, so half, glass half empty. You know what? And, and God wants to restore the joy of your salvation. Maybe it's growth. There's some areas in your life that God's trying to expand or increase your capacity or grow you, and he's got some words for that, and we need to lean into that. Maybe, maybe it's forgiveness. There's some people in your life, some hurt that you're still carrying that you need to let go to. Maybe it's repentance. Maybe it's humility, trust, faith in him. You name it. What good theme is your heart overflowing with? Amen? Because God's word to you will lead you to where you need to go. Amen? And so we, we can take that out of there. So that's number one. Jonah had a word from God. He had a nice path laid out for him. But as we know, we're going to go to chapter, uh, point two here. It didn't work out as great for him because of his response. So number two is this. Running from God is never the answer. Amen? Running from God is never the answer. Jonah chapter 1 verse 3. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, went down into it to go to them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. What happened in this story? Let's sum it up and bring it real terms. God said go, Jonah said no, all right? Like, God, how many, that basic, like kids church here, all right? God said go, Jonah said heck no, nah. right? He went the opposite way. God said go to, go to Nineveh, go to your enemies, preach repentance to him. And Jonah said nope, he immediately and intentionally found a boat going to Tarshish. Now, Deeper study will show how jacked up this was. This wasn't like I'm here in Howl and I'm just going to go to Brighton, all right? This is like, like a long ways away. Back in these times, in these ancient times that we're talking about here, Tarshish was the farthest west of the known world. Like they thought you would fall off the face of the earth. If you went any further west, it wasn't discovered yet. They didn't know if anything was out there. It was super far away, right? And um, it, it, it was a nice port city in Spain, all right? Think of like Airbnb, all-inclusive resort, like we're going to go here and just kick it and run from God, all right? So you guys are seeing this map here for you online. We're going to hold this here for a few seconds, and then I'll be back with you on the next slide. Uh, but here, here's the context. Nineveh was about 500 to 500 feet, miles northeast Tarshish was 2,500 miles straight west. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. He got on a boat heading to Tarshish. Do you see how opposite and jacked up? This is a 3,000 mile no. Heck no. All right? And we laugh and we point fingers. We're like, Jonah's so stupid. He's so foolish. How many of us, if we'd be honest, have done this in our life before. And I'm going to raise my hand. On some topic, on some situation, God has asked you to do something. He's nudged your heart and your spirit to talk to this person. He said, you need to do this. You need to stop doing this. And we have just said, heck no. And we've done the exact opposite that God has asked us to do. We've all been in that 3,000 mile no experience, I believe, at one point or another. And, and, and it says that Jonah went to flee the presence of the Lord. How silly is that? To get away from God. Can we, <laughs> can we, can we really escape God's presence? The, the psalmist David, King David in Psalm 139, he puts it real plain for us. Verses 7 through 10, he says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascended into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and I dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. <laughs> AKA, you can't run from God. Even if you want to, even if you try, you cannot escape his presence, right? God said go, Jonah said no, right? And um, 
We, we laugh about this, but man, I, I really just, I feel like the Lord wants to encourage us and challenge us. Uh, today's message is both encouraging and very challenging, all right? Amen? Uh, but I believe if we respond to the word of God, it will be one of the most fruitful things that we can experience in our life. And, and so oftentimes, I think we tell God no, but we don't verbally say no, right? Let's be honest, in the word that we just read in Jonah, he didn't say God no. We, we, we say no by our actions, we say no by our attitudes. Amen, right? That's usually where the rubber meets the road even for us. We're not like God, God speaks to us. We're like, no, we just get nervous. We get scared. We get fearful. And we just start going the opposite direction. We start walking the wrong direction. We don't say no blatantly. So in our minds, we really haven't said no to God. But our, our body and our flesh is going one direction. Our spirit's like, no, go to Nineveh. And we're like, no, this, uh, this nice place called Tarsus, that sounds really comfortable and nice to me. I'm heading that way, right? And there's this war every single day in our, between our flesh and our spirit of, man, are we going to do what God's word says? Or, or are we going to do what we feel like or what our flesh wants to do, right? And, and we got to make sure that we're not making a 3,000-mile mistake, a 3,000 mile no. And so, man, like this happens in any area of our life. If I can just be real with you, maybe, maybe God said, hey, you need to stop dating that man or that woman. I said, but no, they're, they're cute. Oh man, no, I like, they're so handsome. I can't. I just can't. And so God says, go or get rid of it. And you say, no. God says, hey, you need to stop watching that show or clicking on that media that gets you in trouble. And you're like, oh, come on. What's the big deal? Everybody's doing it. It's not that big of a deal. It's not going to affect things, right? And so not by our words, but by our actions, we, we say no. God places somebody on our heart to pray for or to send a text or to set up a lunch meeting or to be intentional spiritually in their life. But we're like, no, I'm too busy. No, there's too much going on at work. No, I got to do this, that, or the other. We make excuses. And so by our actions, we, we say no. God says go. We, we say no, Right? God challenges us to up our generosity, so bring a tithe into the store. Don't give sacrifice. We say, that's great and dandy, but we justify every reason why that's not a good time for us. That we, we, this isn't a good season for me to do this. And so God says, go, and, and, and we say no. This can happen in every area of our lives. And we think we're running to something healthy. <laughs> but as we know the story of Jonah, as we continue to unravel and unpack this thing, this is shooting ourselves in the foot. Amen? This is dangerous play. Side note, as we close this point, there will always be a friendly ship heading in the wrong direction that will take you wherever you want to go, and there's always going to be room enough for you on that ship. Hello? There will always be a friendly ship heading in the exact wrong direction that God has called you. And they're saying, come on, man, the boat ride's beautiful. Tarshish is amazing, right? There's going to always be that. If you're looking for it, my goodness, the enemy will make sure there's a lot of boats loaded at that port, ready, ready to take you wherever your little heart desires, amen? But it could be 3,000 miles away from what God has called you to do, right? If you, if you want somebody, you want that ship, it's going to come in many different forms, if you want somebody to affirm the sin in your lifestyle, in your life, you'll find them, right? If you want a church that only preaches things that makes you comfortable and never lets you grow and never builds your faith, you'll find them. You can find them, right? If you want a group of friends that will take you down every single weekend on Friday, Saturday, Sunday night and what you're doing, you'll find them. Come on now. You want media to click on that will be the exact opposite of what God has called you to do in your standard of purity in life, you'll find it very easily, right? If you want people to give you advice that's not in line with God's word, guess what? You'll find those shit. Ships. You'll find those ships really easy in this culture. And so we got to be careful on what ship we're hopping on, what boat we're hopping in, more importantly, what direction is that boat heading? Is it heading towards God's plan and God's will, God's word, or is it heading away from it? Running from God is never the answer, amen? The third point, and the last thing I want to talk about today is this, number three. This one hits, this one hits really hard, all right? You guys ready for this one? Disobedience opens the door to storms. Disobedience to God and God's word opens the door to storms in our life, right? When we're disobedient, when we go against God's plan or God's will, we can have some stormy conditions in our life. And I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. I know I have before. When I'm not walking with God in the way I know I should be, it just opens the door for a lot of crap and junk to be allowed in my life. 
God doesn't put it on me. He's not the author of all that stuff. But I've opened the door. I've cracked the door for the enemy and for him because I'm not under God's protection because I've stepped outside of his word and his will and I'm doing my own thing. God still loves me. God still got a plan for me. But I, it, God didn't move. God didn't change. Remember, he's the same, right? Same God, right? Last week, we change. And we step out and say, I know more than God. And we get prideful, and we try to do that. And how many of you guys know, nine out of ten times, you fall flat on your face, right? And then it's this humble circle, and okay, Lord, I'm sorry. And he's like, I love you. I still love you, man. Come on back over here. It's good, right? And we do this thing, right? Jonah chapter 1, verse 4, but the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. For Jonah, his disobedience produced a literal storm in his life. I'm not talking about that us being disobedient to God's word will intentionally cause a thunderstorm warning or tornado warning here in Livingston County, okay? I'm not going there, but metaphorically speaking, spiritually speaking in our lives, a lot of times storms are allowed, storms creep in when we are disobedient. They might show up in the form of a strained relationship. That just, ah, just things are muddied right there. They might, they might show up in the form of financial hardship, right? They might, they might show up in no peace, no rest, the spirit of restlessness, right? They might show up in sickness and, and disease and, and illness or a physical attack, right? Stormy conditions are not good for our lives. God wants us to roll in life, to have a smooth path. He never promised it would be easy, but he wants us to smooth through with him. And when we are exactly doing the opposite of what he's called us to do, we invite stormy conditions into our lives. And how many of you guys know when we're in those conditions, doesn't it feel like we're at our low point? Have you ever been there before? Check out what Jonah did. Jonah chapter 1, verse 5. And the mariners or the sailors were afraid. Every man cried out to his God. They threw the cargo over there to make sure they lightened low. But check this out. But Jonah had gone down to the lowest parts of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. Jonah was at an all-time low. Yes, he's on a ship that's about to be broken up. But why was that even happening in the first place? It was because of his disobedience, his deliberate disobedience of going the opposite way God had called him to go, right? And he was at a low point. God said, go. Jonah said, no. And all these storms came into his life, and, and we don't have time to go into the depth of this, but I think you guys could all agree on this point, that disobedience, going the exact opposite of what God's word says, disobedience is sin, amen? Let's we'll call it what it is. It's not do it. It's missing the mark. Sin is just means missing God's mark. God has a mark. It's his word. It's his will. When we miss it, when we go the opposite way, we're, we're, we're not in line with God's will. It's sin. We know that from Romans chapter 6, verse 23, I don't have it for the screens, that the wages of sin is death. Storms, not good situations and circumstances in our lives. And so what word has God spoken to us? What word are we maybe running from? Or what word are we being deliberately disobedient on? And what storms have broken out in our life that, man, at the end of the day, who's to, who's to really point the finger at, right? Who, 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 do we, who needs to take ownership of that? Because here's something else that we see through Scripture, that disobedience not only negatively affects us, it can negatively affect others in our life too, amen? It can create storms in other people's lives. The sailors on the ship, they were called to go to Tarshish. That was their plan. That was their, but because of Jonah's disobedience, their lives were put in danger. They had to cry out to God and say, what is going on here? Are we gonna die? What are we supposed to do with this guy, right? Their lives were affected, right? Jonah's decision was personal for him, but his consequences were communal. They affected other people, right? This is so true in our own lives, right? Our disobedience can affect others. If we're married, the sin of our spouse, ourself, or our spouse can affect the health of our marriage. Amen? Right? If, if we have kids, our disobedience as parents can bring storms into our family that were never intended to come. Right? On the job, our disobedience personally can affect the company's success or, or the bottom line. Even in our witnessing and sharing Christ with others, our disobedience to do that could short circuit somebody from hearing of the love of God or hearing of the gospel or the goodness just because we're too busy or we're too nervous or too scared. We don't know what to say, right? It affects 
other people. Jonah not going to Nineveh put the Ninevites' life in danger because God had already made up his mind about those people unless they had responded to the word of God. And the only way they're going to respond to the word of God is if they heard the word of God. And the only way they'd hear the word of God is if Jonah manned up and actually went to Nineveh and did what God called him to do. So disobedience is an ugly thing. It's nasty. And we got to say, Lord, search my heart. If there's any ounce of of disobedience in my life right now. I don't want it. I repent of it. I want to turn from it. I need to get back on track heading the right way. Amen? Because we love, we love Jesus. Amen? I love, I love what it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 19. It says, For as by one man, cap, uh, lowercase m, disobedience were many made sinners. It's talking about Adam, right, in the garden. So also one man's, capital M, obedience, many will be made righteous. Adam's disobedience negatively affected all of us, right? It's in nature is born into us. We have it when we're born. Jesus, that one man's obedience to go to the cross, to do what God called him to do, affects all of our lives in a positive way. Amen? Aren't you thankful for Jesus? Aren't you thankful that somebody came and paid the price to take care of our disobedience, to, to, to line us back up to God's perfect plan for our lives. And so, man, when we acknowledge our disobedience, when we stop running from God and we start turning in the right direction, how many of you guys know the storms can be calmed? Amen? We see this through Scripture, Jonah chapter 1, verses 12 through 15, and he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. There's some awareness there. Amen? Nevertheless, the men rode hard, and they're like, no, no, we're going to try to return to land. But they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, we pray, O Lord, please don't let us perish for this man's life. Do not charge us with this innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Powerful stuff. Jonah acknowledged his disobedience. He acknowledged that he was running from God running from God's presence, running from God's plan, being willfully in the wrong direction of God's word that he spoke to him, right? And so he, he had a changing of heart. It's what we call repentance when we are going one direction, but we, we turn and we begin to go. He, he wasn't fully repentant because he just stopped. He just stopped going another mile towards Tarshish. He said, throw me into the sea so that this storm will stop and these lives will be spared and I can just kind of deal with this me and God, right? He didn't sail one more mile. What was the result? The storms were calmed in his life. The sea calmed down. Right? As we know, the story just juices up after this. Right? And we're going to talk more about that. The last verse in chapter 1 is when he gets swallowed by a whale. We're going to save that for next week because that really just tees up chapter 2. And all of us are still thinking, like, are you serious? Right? I'm being real. Like, like, like a story like Jonah is pretty unbelievable. Would you, would you disagree with me on that? Like, like you get to parts in the Bible where it's like the flood killed everybody on earth. Did it really? Did he really build a boat that big that housed all the animals? Did a dude really go in the belly of a whale? Or was that just some kind of metaphorically speaking thing? We're gonna talk about that. But here's what I do know. I don't have it all figured out. I know God does. We serve an unbelievable God. Amen, we serve a God who can do unbelievable things right? That, that supersedes our wisdom, our knowledge, our understanding. He, he's above that. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And if he's God and we're not, we need to just put him in the right position in our life and say, if you want to take a man and put him in a whale and do this, he can do it. Amen? Like, I just, no, he can't. That's not, I, I studied, I, you know, I studied for five years at Harvard and I, you know, it's like, unbelievable God. Can't explain it but he could do it, amen? Because it's his nature and his character. And so today, I pray that you were stirred. I pray that we've been challenged. Again, we're just gonna walk through this thing step by step, chapter by chapter. But number one, God's word leads the way. What word, what theme, what good theme in your heart has God placed on your heart right now in this season? Don't ignore it. Don't disregard it. And don't run away from it. Lean into it, amen? God, what are you speaking to our hearts and how can we be obedient to it? Number two, running from God is never the answer. That's just silly. David said it, you cannot escape God's presence, right? 
oh man, I'm just not living right. I'm, I'm gonna stop coming to church. I'm gonna hide from God. That's what a lot of us do. We don't feel worthy enough to come on Sunday, so we don't come. How broke and jacked up is that? The place of hope and healing, the place that we need to be at, the enemy says, no, you're not ready. You're not good enough to be there, so don't go. And we think we're hiding from God. I'll just stop texting my Christian friends and stop showing up to the crew and I'll just kind of keep doing this because I'm really deep in over here in this sin and this lifestyle and I'm just gonna trick everybody else. And Man, I'm still, sin feels good. It, it's awesome. It's great over here. But, but God all along is here with loving arms saying, bro, sis, wh- what are you doing? Like, I stink and love you so much. Like, I didn't call you to do that. You know my word. You know better than that. And everyone's like, I don't know. I'm mad at God anyways. This is going on and inflation is going up. And all. And he's like, yo, who caused that storm? Who allowed that storm into your life? Was it me or was it you? We got to come back home, amen? We can't run and hide from God. It's never the answer. And number three, disobedience opens the door for storms. So if you've got some stormy conditions right now, Look inward first. I think our our fleshy response is to point and to blame shift, even put it on God and be mad and distance ourselves. That's the exact opposite that we need to be doing. What maybe area of our life are we not being fully obedient? And just so you know, not every storm is caused by disobedience, all right? Let's just be theologically correct here. We live on an earth with a curse. The enemy comes into our life to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to stir up some storms too. But just because you're facing a storm doesn't mean maybe you're necessarily in disobedience. But man, it sure is a great check of our heart in this season to be like, Lord, let's make sure that our hearts stay pure and stay free from disobedience because we know what door it could crack in our lives. Amen. And so I pray that you're encouraged today and challenged today by the story of Jonah, that we can see ourselves in the midst of this narrative, how God says go and by our actions or our attitudes or our posture, we say no and we're running and it's like a 3,000 mile no. But how many of you guys know? Never too far is ever too far gone with God. Amen? You're never too far away for God's love. You're never too far away from God's grace. You're never too far away for God's mercy and forgiveness. You're never too far away. Even if you feel like you're 3,000 miles away right now and you're like, God, you're so distant. I think there's somebody online that's watching right now. You feel so distant. You didn't even come today in person. You don't feel good about your relationship with God. You feel like it's gone right now. You feel like it's shipwrecked right now. God says by his spirit, I love you. I want you. You're coming back. I can do amazing things in your life. Come on, somebody. I believe God is resurrecting hope in some hearts this morning. I believe God is moving in an amazing way when we just stop running, we turn and we start going the other way with his help. Amen? And so we need help. We need God's help to do this. Amen? We can't can't do this in our own strength. And so we're going to pray and uh, and then I'm going to invite the team back up after I pray. And we're just going to have a moment to worship him and put our faith and trust in God, even when it doesn't make sense, even when it's a little stormy, even when we're kind of pondering what is going on we can get our hearts right and say, Lord, search me. See if there be any wicked way within me, like the psalmist said. Make sure there's no ounce of disobedience. Make sure that we're leading our life. The, the word of God is leading our life. If some other word, somebody, person's opinion, whisper in your ear has been leading, today that stops in Jesus' name so we can get back on the right journey with God. Amen? But would you go to me in the Lord uh, as we pray? Father, we love you so much, and we just thank you for your word. It's truth and it sets us free. It's a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. And Father, I just pray for every person here, both in person and online. Lord, that we would allow God, your word, to lead and guide our life. No matter how countercultural it is, no matter what our family members think, no matter how afraid we might be about actually lining our lives up to your word, We trust your nature and your character. You're good and you're faithful and you're trustworthy. You never ask us to do something that would steal, kill, and destroy from our life. That's not your nature and character. That's the enemy's. So Father, help align our hearts and align the direction of our life's ship in the right direction, heading in the right course today. Father, for some of us, today is a day that we stop running 
We stop running right now in Jesus' name. We stop in the name of Jesus in our tracks, and we begin to turn back to God. We begin to turn towards love. We get to turn towards mercy. We get to turn back to forgiveness. We get to turn back to joy. We get to turn back to hope in Jesus' name. We will not run, and we cannot outrun you, Father God, and we'll never outrun your love because it's always there, and it all consumes us, Father. So bring us back home to that right relationship with you. And lastly, number three, Lord, help us not be disobedient. If you say go, we say yes, sir. We say where? If you say speak, we, we do it. If we say stay put and stay faithful, even though your flesh doesn't like it, even though it's hard, even though it's a grind, but you've called us there, we'll stay faithful to it until you release us to the next assignment. Father, we ask you by your spirit today to do a fresh thing in our hearts. Lord, that we would not be running from you, but we would be running towards you today as we leave this service into our week, Father God. And so Lord, I thank you that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you can do all these things and more. And Father God, that we leave transformed and changed and repositioned into the call of God on our lives. Lord, we love you. We pray this and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you guys just keep your heads bowed and eyes closed just for a second here, I got one more invitation. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've never put your faith and trust in the God that we speak about, the God we preach about, the God that we worship, we get excited about, we lift hands to, that's the first step on this amazing journey called life. You see, God already did everything he's going to do. He sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die for you. On the third day, he rose again. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father. He prays for you as he's there. He loves you with an everlasting love. He knows all your sin and mistakes. He knows all the junk in your life, and he loves you the same. He takes you with open arms. Our response to that free gift of salvation is just simply faith. It's, it's confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says you would be saved. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here both in person or maybe this is for you tuning in and watching online or you're watching this later, you don't have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus, and you'd like to be joined in this prayer that I'm about to pray, I'm not gonna call you out or call you up or embarrass you. I just wanna know, hey, is there anybody that wants to go all in with Jesus today? With every head bowed, every eye closed, you just slip up your hand real quick and you, so I know who I can join my faith with to pray. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And would you guys just repeat this after me? Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. I receive him as my Lord and as my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart, change my life, and help me live a life that honors you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Praise God. Isn't he good? Isn't he faithful? Come on. And so here's how we're going to go out today, all right? Here's how we're going out. Here's how we're going out. <laughs> Team just... Just chill, play keys, all right, cool, all right? We're going out in faith. Some of us turned our ship today, amen? Some of us, we're still wrestling with what God's doing, but we're on the right path, amen? We know that God has said something, but maybe we haven't done that. For some of us, we just need to be obedient to it. There's somebody you need to call and text this week. There's somebody you need to pray for this week. There's, there's a seed you need to sow this week. There's, there's encouragement you need to give this week. There, there's something that God has placed on your heart and it's there for a reason, amen? And so we can hear a good word and not do any lick of good if we have it go in one ear and out the other. James said, be a doer of the word, amen? So I wanna encourage you, I wanna challenge you, I wanna kinda coach you, coach Eric saying, hey, bring it in, huddle up real quick as we leave today. Let's go out and do God's word, amen? Let's head our lives in God's direction. And may we trust him to know that he's faithful to watch over his word to perform it. He'll make provision for us where it looks like there's no way, amen? And so I just wanna encourage you guys with that. Erica, would you come up and, and close us out today? Thank you.